The citizens of King County travel, they hike, they enjoy the outdoors. The air support unit and King County Medic One provide those opportunities to help people that find themselves in need. You have rotors, Thanks, sir. We get calls all the time to help out um, in Pierce County, Snow County. Uh, we've gone out on the peninsula to help. If, if we're available and weather permits, we're happy to go. Roughly nine years ago, uh, I was able to be a part of the first mission that we were successfully able to incorporate medics into the uh, air support and successfully pick a patient and treat and transport to Harborview Medical Center. Are you able to sit up at all? They can do a lot more than a drone can. We're gonna put this on like a coat. Put your arm through that hole. With some circumstances, the patients are found by search and rescue, and it's going to require 15, 20 people to be able to successfully carry people out over rugged terrain. So the helicopter can fly over, and in most situations, we can lower down a RS and a medic, and we can start providing that support and then hoist back into the helicopter and return to one of the hospitals. There's definitely those, those ones where you've definitely made such a big impact saving those lives. We turn down a lot of rescues uh, and a lot of uh, patrol assistance based on not having helicopters available and not having pilots. We have four. We have four full-time pilots and that's it. I wish there were more folks down here working uh, and I wish we could keep helicopters up in the air more often. Uh, but when we're up and able to fly, um, it's you can't beat it, as far as I'm concerned. There's two rescue helicopters. One of our hoists on the second one there is actually broken right now. So we really only have one fully capable rescue helicopter. If we needed to, we could move the hoist over to the other one, but that's, you know, we have to get a mechanic up here. It, it's, it's an undertaking. We're able to still continue doing hoist operations, but it just puts more wear and tear on those helicopters and requires more service and more upkeep on the two helicopters that are in service. I'm sitting in a 1970 helicopter that was designed in the 1950s on a slide rule. Great helicopter, don't get me wrong, but I think it's time for us to look at something that was, you know, we've taken this technology and improved on it, and there's definitely that technology out there. This unit has done a really good job of funding itself on a shoestring. Those are both military surplus. Um, we've only paid for one helicopter ever. The other ones through the years have all been military surplus or trades. Um, and then we've really leveraged federal grant money to equip them. Back in you know the Vietnam era, this is where the machine guns would mount and all the uh, all the old military stuff. So right now, both patrol helicopters, uh, one had an, an engine issue that's probably going to keep it down for a while, and then we have a backup helicopter. Uh, we try and manage maintenance with those. So there's always one available. With one being down long term, and the other one just going down for scheduled maintenance. For about a week, we're without an aircraft capable of doing patrol. You look up front here, you're gonna see an ashtray, which is something you would never see uh, in a modern helicopter. But again, I go back to this was designed in the 1950s and it was flown in Vietnam in the 1970s where your pilot probably had a cigarette hanging out of his mouth. We've helped Chelan County a couple years ago had a thing where a guy opened fire on one of their um, police cars in an apple orchard. We actually sent a Huey with um, about seven SWAT team members on it and our patrol helicopter to go help them with that manhunt. Looks like I got eyes on stage. If we get in a pursuit and they're up, we don't even have to chase the car. The helicopter can just follow them and they're just a helicopter up in the air and they don't, they, you know, we don't even have to risk the, uh, the public driving fast trying to, you know, if we back off, the person probably will slow down because he doesn't think he's being chased and start driving like normal again and the helicopters follow them the whole time while we're able to come up with a game plan and try to arrest that person safely without endangering the rest of the public. We're referred to as a force multiplier. So when we're on scene, we are we take the place of twenty patrol cars. You know, we, we create this this presence on scene just because of the noise and the fact that we're in the air, which has a an effect on on most suspects' behavior, I wouldn't say all, but on most suspects, it, we are uh, we serve as a de-escalation tool. In this day and age, where de-escalation has become, it, it's not a buzzword. It, it's it's a way of life in law enforcement that when I started 18 years ago, it, it wasn't necessarily on the tip of everyone's tongue. 
These are great de-escalation tools. When we find someone who has fled from a stolen car or has now committed a violent crime and has fled into the woods. I mean, we've had calls where there's been guys that have been shooting at state troopers or um, guys who are armed and the house is surrounded. We can see them on the back porch walking around with an assault rifle. We're able to find them out of remove and keep an eye on them so that folks on the ground can come up with a good plan to find this person. The alternative is we have deputies or officers wandering through the woods with a flashlight and a gun. And when those two people meet, whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen. There's no opportunity for planning at that point. And one of the great things that we're able to do is find that person without risking ourselves and without them having to risk their lives so that everyone can slow down a little bit and figure out what tools do we need to bring What's the best way to accomplish this mission? Northbound first, he's in the left lane. We enhance safety uh, for, for officers. We enhance safety for suspects. We, we create a calming presence uh, when we're on a scene. Our other patrol helicopter, our 407, actually has a loudspeaker on it that we just got installed in the last um, couple months. So even from the air, we're able to talk to someone and say, hey, there's no way out. A police dog is gonna come get you in that thicket. If you don't wanna get bit, just come out. And we've had good success with that. We've had people give up because they realize we can see them, they're not gonna get away, and we avoid any sort of use of force. The one in Bellevue, where we had, the, had an armed suspect at the back of a house, and he was armed with a rifle and a, and a pistol. I think the pistol was later determined to be a, a BB gun, but uh, you know, nobody on the ground would have known that anyway. So I was flying, Tony, Tony was the one who you know, called everything out and, and was able to to create a safer environment for these guys. And again, you know, that's where I was, what I was talking about, where we made it safer for the suspect and for the, the officers on the ground. Nobody got hurt. We were providing that situational awareness to them that they don't necessarily have and, and providing that just to keep them out of trouble, out of uh, harm's way. We can see things they don't, all that kind of stuff. We can, we can see the surprises, the things that may surprise them coming around a corner, um, you know, things, things like that that'll that catch them off guard, so. So on patrol, it's nice because they can cover so much ground. Uh, you know, when somebody, you show up to a call and somebody says, hey, they ran that way, and you look, and it's nothing but sticker bushes and stuff that I do not want to go through, the helicopter can quickly tell me if I need to go through it or not. All right, they pitted him. We do a lot for minimal staff and, right, we got a pit. you know, older, older equipment. I think we, you can say that we've definitely earned that. We're the only full-time helicopter unit in the state of Washington. There's other agencies that have a helicopter capability, but it's run with part-time folks or volunteers, in some cases civilian pilots that volunteer their time to fly a officer or deputy around. Uh, the State Patrol has a full-time aviation unit, but it's all uh, fixed wing. And so we provide all of the helicopter service really for this region. Um, and so when we're down, this region is pretty much out of the helicopter business. Um, and I think that we contribute a lot, both with our, our capabilities to rescue folks, uh, but also our law enforcement mission. We're down right now at this very moment. I cannot do, go do a patrol call because I don't have any patrol helicopters. So having something that's, again, in that newer, something that's the same with, with although newer, of what we are currently fly for a primary patrol helicopter would be ideal. So we're never, there's never a lapse in capability. Well, if, if not us, who's going to do it? We're willing to go anywhere as long as it's safe and we have the capability to do it uh, and an aircraft and a pilot available. I don't know what else I would do. I think we're providing a pretty good service to the, the public that we serve. And so we've done a great job of not having to ask our own taxpayers for very much to keep this life-saving unit afloat.